I'm back with coffee. Lots of coffee. Just came in from uh, the Bronx. Met with a couple architects that were uh, in the healthcare facility business. About 250,000 square feet. In any event, am I in the mood to work on a hospital? Okay, so adding detail components we're talking about, right? This is important. Detail components are what's going to allow us to get all these uh, details onto our sheets so that we can convey uh, the architect's or the engineer's uh, intent to the client or to the field or to uh, an approving authority, a regulatory authority. Now, adding detail components. Another important tool for detailing is the detail component. A family that consists of exclusively 2D geometry. You can schedule detail components, tag them, and assign keynotes. Because they are families, they can also be stored in your office library and shared easily across projects. To add a detail component to a view, select detail component from the component drop-down list, excuse me, located on the annotate tab, and use the type selector to choose from components that are already loaded in the model. If you don't see a detail component you want to insert in the type selector, click the Load Families button in the contextual tab of the ribbon and load one from the default library uh, or your office library. Now, uh, what it's saying is that if you go to the Annotate Toolbar and the Detail Panel, you'll see Component. You'll see Detail Component, Repeating Detail Component, and you'll see Legend Component. Let's just read it for a second, verbatim. Adds a specific view, uh, I did it again. It's a view specific detail component to view. I'm always rushing. If no detail component families are loaded into the project, load a detail, uh, detail family from the library or create your own detail family. You can add keynotes to detail components. Repeating detail component. Repeats a detail component along a path. Repeating details are primarily used in plan views and section views. You can specify the layout and spacing of the repeating detail. Courses of concrete masonry units, cinder block. Legend. We're not going to get the tool because it's inactive. Uh, if we were in a sheet, it would be a different story or a drafting view. But uh, I digress. Let's not, let me stay on focus. You know me. If you've seen any of my prior videos when I'm under the gun, I behave a bit differently. Now, it has something to do with money. Now, you can, if you don't see the one that you want, you can load it from the library. So right now we have a corrugated wall tie section, 24 gauge corrugated tie. As you see, there are a bunch loaded in this particular project. They have uh, some, um, some metric as well as some U.S. Imperial sized dimensional lumber. So now, if you don't see what you want in this particular uh, project, you may not find the one you want, so you go into edit type. And within the context of that, you'll see that you can load a type that's not loaded. So, uh, it'll bring you right to the library that goes to this directory tree, right? By default, unless you remove it, and then you may have to maybe search for it on your network drive. But in any event, um, you may have someone on the other end of the coordination team that can sync it into the model as well. Keep that in mind. If you're working in a collaborative environment, and I'm at this workstation, and I have a friend in uh, Algeria that has that particular detail component, there's absolutely no reason why they couldn't just place it in the model and sync with Central, and then I would have the availability to have it. I wouldn't have to load it from anywhere. I could easily send a message, a notification, please load this into the family. There could very well be someone that that's all they do. Because again, you don't want to overburden these drawings with uh, hundreds hundreds of different families because then the size of the file gets big. You want to keep these as lean as you can. Every inch counts in architecture. Every inch counts. But as you can see, detail items, right, goes by division. Man, it's cops everywhere tonight. It's worse on that. It's horrible, 
horrible time. I, I didn't even thought I'd see this in my lifetime. In any event, I don't want to get all pushed out of shape. Luckily, luckily, I survived it. Now a lot of other folks are going through it. I was, I was able to listen from New York. You have no idea where I've come from in the last 25 years. I was able to escape in any event. Okay, so yeah, you can find uh, a lot of these in your office library. And you see by division. So I, I can't go into all of these, but I would recommend digging through here. There's a lot of really interesting, interesting 2D components that you could uh, embellish onto your, uh, your details. All right, so I'm just going to just hit cancel. And you see I have nothing selected in this view as a component. I have a wall tie, which is not, if you zoom in, you can see it. But that's not where we want to put it, right? This is the detail that we're looking at. Oops, I, I moved ahead a little bit. I kind of did it already. As you can see, I already placed in a 50 by 150 inch, 150 millimeter nominal uh, dimensional lumber member. Now, you see this base molding and then there's uh, all sorts of things we can use to embellish. Remember, in the Autodesk Default Family Library, detail components are stored in the Detail Items folder, which I just showed you, under which the folders are organized according to master format or a similar standard coding system. Many building objects are represented in the default library with detail components. For example, if you are looking for a detail component representing a steel beam, don't look in the library under Structural Framing. Instead, look in the Detail Items folder, and I have done that a lot. I do it all the time. And again, after you do it, it'll become second nature. Adding detail component oops, and an extension of your creativity, and through this, you will realize great architecture. I always have to add that. I, I find it to be a very, very powerful statement. Because it's true. This is gonna this tool is gonna be an extension of your creativity. Adding detail components and embellishing the view. We have preloaded some detail component families into the sample building project you downloaded earlier in the chapter. Use the following components to further embellish the bottom, middle, and top portions of the wall section. Uh, section. The metric equivalents may have an M prefix. They did it on purpose. And I can tell you a story. I'm not gonna, but there's a method to this madness. When they train people on this, there's a lot that you have to worry about. You're dealing with people from all walks of life, all over the globe. There's so much interactivity between, um, between different regions around the globe. So it has to be able to be collaborated effectively. So you need all these, all these options. And you need to be able to work with these people. And they need to be able to work with you. And again, you get more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. In any event, not everybody follows that mantra. <laughs> Some people just want to slap or fly. Base molding, section. Nominal cut lumber, section. Corrugated wall tie, section. Okay, so, as you see, we have those loaded and inserted into this wall section. These detail components are all specifically designed to be used in a section detail. There are other similar detail components, excuse me, in the default library that can be used in a plan detail or when the object is to be shown from the side. Let me repeat that. There are other similar detail components in the default library that can be used in plan detail or when the object is to be shown from the side. So yeah, these are, yeah, by you looking at it by its, by its width, right? This runs laterally, in this instance, north to south along this foundation and at the sill. So, or under the sill. So, depending on which view you're looking at, you're going to have to choose a different 2D component. It's not a 3D component. But, um, it uh, it, you will see, it will affect scheduling, but let me show you something. I discussed in the last exercise that 
these are, when we draw detail lines, they're only able to be seen in certain views, right? Now, in the view that they're drawn in, I should say. In the view that they're drawn in, and they're not going to carry over to another view, meaning they're the same view, excuse me, and you draw in one view, there's not, you're not going to see it in the other view, and that's good and bad, right? Unless you use a model line. But if you look at this section, oops, you can see you don't see it. So, granted, this section callout, not a section, it's a section callout, um, is drawn on section two. Now, this is section two. This is the section callout. So it's showing the call out right at that cut. If we went to the floor plan and we look at section two, let's look here. Here's the conference room. It's being cut. This is the this is the cut right here. That's the cut. Right? Section two. So let me click it again. Now think about this for a second. We're looking this way at the the longitudinal longitudinal section of the building, and you don't see those those two D details. But now I want to make sure that you understand where we place them in two. They're only two D. They have no depth. They're only two D lines. Now let's just say for sake of argument, I was able to take this cut line and bring it precisely coplanar to that 2D element. You're still not going to see it because it's considered a detail line. It's a long way to go to explain that, but that's what I wanted to tell you. So let's just hold that thought and let's continue on. So like I said, there are other similar detail components in the default library that can be used in a plan detail or when the object is to be shown from the side. And the detail that I show, I'm showing you here is, uh, is showing exactly the detail components that have been added to the detail view of the model. You might notice that there are only three types loaded for the detail component family named nominal cut lumber section. What if you need to load more types from that same family? This scenario occurs sometimes when you use families that have a type catalog. Refer to chapter 15, designing with the family editor for more information about families and type catalogs. To reload a family for access to additional types within the family, one option is to start the detail component tool again, click load family and find that family in the library. A simpler solution is to locate the family in the project browser. Detail items. Oh, you should be able to see this over my big fat head. But it's getting skinnier. I lost eight pounds. <clears throat> to reload a family, yet a roll. The type selector, the load family from the project browser. The families branch is toward the bottom. Right click the family name and choose reload from the context menu. If the family source file, the RFA, is available and the family has an associated type catalog, the type catalog dialog box will allow you to select additional types to be loaded in the project. So now, if we look at nominal cut lumber section, right? You see we have uh, we have a, a, a pretty robust amount. But if I was to right mouse click and reload, we'll we'll get mm, uh, mm, mm, we'll get we may get the type catalog. Let's just see. Let's test it, shall we? It goes right to, it, does, it didn't go to the family, uh, it didn't go to the Imperial Library. It defaulted over to here. So we have to go back now and search back to C, Program Data, Autodesk, Revit, 2020, Libraries, U.S. Imperial, Detail Items, right there. And we're going to look at a Wood and Plastic Division 6. Let's just make sure I have that right. Division 6, I believe that's correct. Uh, wood framing, yeah, I guess that would be there. Nominal cut lumber section, nominal cut lumber section RFA. Let's just see if it loads the type catalog. 
Because now remember, this is the family. And in the family, there are types. So let's open up that. Let's see if we the type. Yeah, we did. Boom. So now, as you can see, in addition to the 1 by 3 up to the, the 3 by 12, let's see, is that right? Yeah, we still have about six, eight more that we could load, inclusive of a four by four post, which is always important. Always need that four by four post. And um, you can see the keynote that's attached to it, right? For scheduling, right? Um, division six, L, uh, I'm sorry, division six, 1100.m1 is the six by six keynote, which is gonna allow this to extract that and put it on the schedule for a quantity count, right? Which is what we're trying to do. We're trying to derive this data from the model as opposed to uh, having to take it off manually. And, and now with all these estimated software platforms, uh, just to give you a little side note, the PDFs that you're gonna produce from this in addition to the model itself, there are such there are estimating platforms out there now that, as you make an addendum or a bulletin, boom, it's updated. It's updated right in the PDF. The, the receptacle pops right off the drawing. You see a revision bubble. It's no longer with the clicker and the highlighter. Red in, yellow out. Red in, yellow out. Taking uh, sheets and, and interleaving them between bulletins and cross-referencing and seeing the difference. I mean, that's. That's the way that's been tried and true, tested over the years, comparing and contrasting based on bulletins. So the contractor captures every ad and every credit, right? Um, you don't want to be stealing from, from your, 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 uh, your lucrative contract. So uh, these, these new technologies are what's enabling us to be able to provide those numbers quicker Real time, real time. Uh, and, and this is really bridging the gap between the field, not just in engineering, project management as well, estimating as well. Every phase of construction, and I hate to say construction, every phase of a project, if you're working on building a new electron microscope, it's the same concept. Things change within the design process, very dynamic. It's a very dynamic field. And if you look at some of my videos, you know, that's what it did to me when I was at my wit's end with not a penny to my name. And uh, I did it to myself. I could have easily, easily just put my hands up and said, you know what? This is too much for me. I'm going to go to the bar. I'm going to drink my sorrows away. And I'm going to know that I'm just not capable of doing this. I'll accept defeat. But why do I bring that up? Because, you know, I don't know if anyone knows me, I post a lot of things to my palette. And then I take it off my palette and I structure it. So I would hope that you don't um, judge me based on the remnant magnetic field that I have to degauss from when I absorb all of this uh, resistance in the field um, because I'm a different person in the office than I am when I am in my comfort zone. Um, but to get in my comfort zone, I've got to just shake off, rattle off all the extenuating circumstances, the mitigating factors, right? There are aggravating and mitigating factors that contribute to the performance of an individual under pressure. Now, I'm not gonna make any excuses for any of my behavior. I just want you to know that this course isn't for everyone. This course isn't for anyone. And the, the, the sick part about it is, I chose it, I chose it. But then again, this is for a different audience. This is for a different audience. Now, let's close that dialogue box. <clears throat> so, that's great. There was a catalog in the family type. Now, we can go back 
if you'd like, real quick, and just I'll, I'll kind of lead you back down the road where we were with the new family that we created. If you remember, let's just create, um, let's do an electrical fixture. I was run home to the meat and potatoes. All right. So if you remember from the family types, right? We had the ability to create new types within the family. That's the catalog, right? And if you create a whole bunch, you don't have to create all of those. You don't have to over constrain your family. I hate to bring up Dow as an example, but Dow Design Group in Bound, New Jersey was, had a similar method with AutoCAD. What, what did you guys, the kid was doing it and he, he was really smart. I, I, I can't profess to be able to step in and, and present his presentation drawings to be stuck to the plywood in front of their structures with the uh, methods that they were using. I could use a different method, but uh, I'm not going to throw them under the bus other than say that these dynamic blocks that they're using, there wasn't necessarily a reason to have that many options because the type selector could alleviate all of those parametric constraints that you built into them to control and to vary their, their sizes and their, their, their parameters. And that goes for anything. Here's an example. Let me think about it before I say it. This is actually a relatively good example. Circuit breakers. You can create a parametric circuit breaker with a AIC rating. Uh, you can create a, a parametric circuit breaker with an overcurrent protection, or I should say, you can create an overcurrent protection device and assign an amperage value to it, or an RMS value, if you will. Um, you can assign a, 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 a peak to peak. You can assign a, all sorts of parameters. And you can nest them all within one overcurrent protection device, or you could create different types so that you don't over constrain the family. It, 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 you'll see what I, what, I, what I mean. I think I've conveyed that effectively. I don't think I should, I should go into that much further. But again, you know, I'm talking a lot of these components that we're talking about are. Linear, we're talking linear and we're talking length and width and height and depth. But those parameters also run the gamut of a, of a thermodynamic spectrum where you're applying, let's say, you have a hose, for example. The fire department was up the block the other day. 400 PSI fire hose. Kinked. I don't know why they kinked it. 400 PSI fire hose with the, the, the coupler. Now, there are lots of uh, hose pressure parameters that could be added to these components as well. So then you're going to have to make the decision um, whether or not you create a parametric uh, component um, that has all those variables in it or if you create types or a combination of both. And that's going to be based on um, uh, your, your, your workflow and your, your company's uh, culture. So, again, that's uh, what I wanted to show you really quick. I know I'm going off on a tangent a little bit, but I just wanted to refresh that um, because, again, there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't start to really, 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 really um, understand that there's so many parameters that you could add. Um, fortunately for me, some parameters weren't available when I needed them. And some of them still aren't net wires for somebody else. In any event, we uh, have to get back to this. So, again, the type catalog uh, will appear if in, indeed the type, the family has a catalog associated with it. If it doesn't, it won't. So um, let's get out of the uh, family uh, creation dialog box and close this family template and make sure it is closed, and I believe it is. So now we're back to our uh, simple building. Now, just talking about following this other uh, series of steps in this next, uh, this next passage. In the project browser, 
Expand the families branch of the tree. Locate and expand the detail items branch. And then locate nominal cut lumber section or M nominal cut uh, lumber section. Right click the family and select reload from the context menu. Note that you may be prompted to select a family file if the original RFA file cannot be located. In that case, we have provided the RFA and the accompanying type catalog in TXT format along with this chapter's exercise downloads. Select the type because they're comma delineated files. Uh, comma delineated, right? Yeah, comma delineated. Select the type 2 and 2 by 10 and 2 by 14 or 50 by 200 millimeter or 50 by 300 millimeter from the specified types dialog box as shown. You click OK. Use the additional types to continue adding detail components to the view within the, within the floor element at the middle of the detail view. Just give me a second. Yeah, so yeah, they tell you to do that, and, and, and they don't give us an example of what detail elements they actually want us to do in this middle. Uh, oops, and I broke it, right? Did I break this? This used to be broken right here. Sorry about that. I reconnected it by dragging it down and touching this. Uh, what was the uh, term that we used for this? This was the cropped region, right? This was a uh, split crop region. Was that the terminology? If I believe, uh, was that what it was called? Hold on a second. We gotta make sure we, we keep our nomenclature fresh within our, our minds, right? We wanted, this thing is actually called, give me one second. Well, we know it's a crop region, but there's a term for the, it when you manipulate it. I don't want to call it a horizontal view break or a vertical view break because that's what we just did. We know that that's what they are. It's a crop region, but it's a it's it's something else, right? It's they call it something else. I want to make sure I reiterate what subregions. They're subregions of the crop of the crop region. Select the crop region again. Click and drag the grip at the bottom of the upper subregion. So the crop. There are subregions within a crop region because we cropped it. Anyway, it's going to take not only me, but you too, years to just constantly go over this. So when you start, is all going to be based on um, your perspective. You may have started 20 years ago. You may be starting tomorrow. You may not start at all. You know, you may, you may choose a different path. But I think, I think I'm in a good position, you know, where I've had enough under my belt that going forward, I, I probably get more, I'll probably get better before I get worse. Unless, of course, I uh, come off my health plan. Luckily, I have a private health plan. Thank God I got a plan. <laughs> Everyone needs a plan. In any event, arranging elements in the view. So far, you've created all the content in order to, in order and have not had to change the arrangement of any of the elements. However, knowing how to change the arrangement is an important part of detailing. So you don't have to draw it all in the exact sequence. Arrangement allows you to change the position of an element, such as a line or a detail component relative to another element, much like layers in Adobe Photoshop, or arrangement of objects in Microsoft PowerPoint, which I use all the time. And I can show you that real quick. Um, you can do it in Microsoft PowerPoint. It allows to take this, right mouse click it, send to back, send, well, there's no, well, I can do it like this. Let's say I take uh, this and put it over here. And I right mouse click, bring to front, send to back. These are the tools that, it's the same thing as in Microsoft PowerPoint. It's the same thing, same concept. And I'm sure lots of folks are familiar with that. Let me get back to Revit. All right, so, uh, yeah, for any of these component, these detail components, you could do that. All right, so, yeah, it, it's going to go through an actual exercise of doing that. And let's just see if I can emulate it. Again, uh, the curriculum <laughs> needs to be prepared. It'd be nice to have an editor. It'd be nice to have help in this endeavor. I usually don't. 
when I get deployed in the field, it's usually, uh, you know, make it happen, Mike. Just make it happen. Come hell or high water, irregardless of what's going on in the office. Just make it happen. <laughs> you know, I don't want to discuss LaGuardia. If I ever told you what I went through over LaGuardia with some of those clowns from Local 3 and some of the driftwood that was coming from Five Star Electric my way, and I caught them from both angles. I had the Five Star folks coming up at me for training on one end of my job that I was working on. But my other job, I was receiving the ones that they fired because they weren't going to pay them to train them. So I had the ones that they selected to be trained, that I had to train. And then I had the ones that they were fucking getting rid of because they didn't like them. <laughs> and I had to deal with them. And I, had to, I, had, I could see why they didn't select some of them for training. But did they have to send them my way? I had the ambitious and the the select, selected few, I shouldn't say few, there's a lot of them. And then on the other end, I'm getting the, the rejects. It was, I was stuck between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> what, a, what a show. I had to bring that up. I, someday I'm going to laugh my ass off. <laughs> someday. Someday, not today. So I better create uh, some things here to give you an idea, because they didn't really give me uh, a downloadable exercise to do it. And uh, it's nothing more than what I just showed you in Photoshop. You know, if you have a filled region and you have a detail component, you can flip back and forth between them, sending them to the front and sending them to the back. But let me just see what, they, what the passage says. So far, you've created all the content in order and have not had to change the arrangement of any of the elements. However, knowing how to change the arrangement is an important part of detailing, so you don't have to draw it all in exact sequence. Arrangement allows you to change the position of an element, such as a line or a detail component, relative to another element, much like layers in Adobe Photoshop or, or arrangement of objects in Microsoft PowerPoint. Revit allows you to place 2D elements in front or behind others. You'll see the arrange panel on the far right once the element of, or group of elements is selected and the modify menu appears. From here, you can choose from among four options of arrangement. Bring to front, bring forward, send to back, send backwards. Bring to front. This brings the selected objects all the way to the front of the stack. There are two detail lines on top of the masking region, which is also on top of the filled region. Okay, good. Now they explained it. So, they have two detail lines that are on top of the masking region, which is on top of a filled region. So why don't we go to annotate, let's go to filled region, show a big, uh, quick filled region, right here, filled region, hit it, and then they have uh, annotate, a masking region, draw it on top of that. Oops, I drew it in line form, that's okay, I'll continue on. They have a masking region, and they have that in front of that. And then they have two detail lines on top of all that. One, escape. Ah, right mouse click, repeat detail line, and they have another line, detail line that way. Okay, so I think this is a sequence which they have them. Except the masking region doesn't look like it's masking anything, and it's outlined in the layout in the book. So I'll have to deal with that. This has got an outline on it in the book. I don't believe I can Let's see. No, it's a masking region. All right, so let's just deal with the fact that that's the case. This brings the selected, uh, brings the front. This brings the selected objects all the way to the front of the stack. And uh, there are two detail lines on top of the masking region, which is also on top of the filled region. By selecting the detail lines and choosing bring to front, we move the lines on top of all other elements. But I drew them in the third sequence, so that's not going to work. But if I grab the one that I drew first and bring that one to front, it's hard to really tell, but it is in front. And even though it's a filled region, it is still masking everything else beneath it. So that's the first uh, choice. Now we have bring forward. This option brings the selected elements one step closer to the front in a given sequence. We selected the masking region and chose bring, to bring forward. And now it appears on top of one of the detail lines. Note that each of the detail lines 
is its own layer within its stack, within the stack. Okay, well, I drew in the filled region, the masking region, and the detail lines. They did it the other way around. So what I'm going to do, if I drew in the, if I drew this last, let's, let's think about that for a second. <laughs> I should spin it back around. I should want to talk about having being perplexed. Now this is where I'm going to have to put my thinking cap on. They brought the uh, masking region forward, covering one of the detail lines. Well, I drew the detail lines last, I drew the masking region second. So if I bring the masking re region forward, bring forward and not bring to front, it should, in theory, hide or mask one of those detail lines because the last detail line was drawn forth in sequence, right? So if I was to go bring forward, did I get it? Hold on. Bring it forward. Click. And that's exactly what happened. So um, I'm not as nuts as I was in a couple of videos. And I've been posting, here's the thing. I, I've been trying to go back to the Facebook page and not lose all that footage so I can see if I can uh, doctor up the cover sheet, shoot it over to, uh, you know, globally, grab a reach from it, and see where it hits. Because that's what I've, I've been looking at the analytics, and I've been getting some hits of some really, really funky places. And it just it would be a shame for me to just throw away all that footage, irregardless of the fact that in a lot of them, I look like I'm ready to bounce off the walls. Granted, it's a little embarrassing, but I mean, under stress, it, it happens. And uh, once you medicate, if you need to, um, or if you're sitting on a tropical island with no stress and a million bucks in the bank, you may behave differently. But the reason I bring that up is because... Um, I, for some godforsaken reason, I want to put them in sequence. I want to put them in sequence so that they follow the chapters of the book, right? So there's a sequence so that when you hit the playlist, boom, you got them all in order. Now, I may be wasting my time, but it's almost like I've got a little bit of a cushion, and I probably should. Instead, maybe you can, maybe uh, tangentially, someone could give me a suggestion, because I don't really get much help. I don't go around having the luxury of asking someone a question and then that they know it, the person who knows it gives me the answer. It's usually not the case. It's usually, listen, we don't really know. Can you do it? And that's it, ordinarily. I wish that I had a mentor, but I don't. <laughs> so a, a suggestion would be nice. So here's my thought process. Being that we'd be getting into the MEP and the AutoCAD plant, right, and the AutoCAD civil, I shouldn't say AutoCAD plant, MEP civil, uh, uh, Revit civil, and a Revit plant, and maybe Orcat plant, just for the IMTT folks. I may do that as a, 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 a nice gesture to some of the folks that I know working down at IMTT. I really wanted to show them how to construct a lot of the pumping mechanisms. I mean, you can do that in uh, AutoCAD MEP, you can do it in Revit as well, but I haven't decided which way I want to do it yet. So prudence dictates that I probably should just, you know, cut my losses, allow that... Um, that hysteresis, that, um, what was the word I'm looking for? Instead of hysteresis, that uh, viscosity, not viscosity, that uh, volatility to remain and then build it going forward, but then you're going to lose all of these other chapters. But again, it really started to come into focus when we started hitting the glazed curtain walls and some of the more uh, intricate components. So I, I kind of went back and grabbed a lot of those. But it would be a shame not to have all of them up there labeled so that they're searchable. And I'm trying to structure the, uh, the keywords so that when these folks search for solutions, they find what it is they're looking for. Because when I learned this and I had to prepare this, how do you think I learned? I remember being in a coordination meeting and being told by Leo McGuffin and Bovis, Google it. You know, they, they didn't care. They, they just wanted you to learn and you had to figure it out yourself. Or, you know, go to Oxford. Do whatever it is, fight, claw, do whatever you got to do to figure out how to do it. And uh, you may not have the luxury of having someone over your shoulder giving you tips and tricks. So uh, that's why I'm acting in this way. I want to give you some tips and tricks to save you the heartache. My heart's in the right place. I'd give you the shirt off my own back. But it's not reciprocal in this world. In any event, I shouldn't say that. I've got a lot of respect for the state of New York. Anyway, I'm sure I got friends in Albany somewhere. In any event, let's uh, now look at send to back. And it's the same thing. This option does the exact opposite of the bring to front tool and will send an object all the way to the back of the stack. 
we've chosen the masking region again and sent it to the back. So if I was to take the masking region and send it back, well now it's behind the filled region. And then the send backwards, and again it would be incremental step opposite of the step forward. The fourth option, select, send backwards, will step the selected elements one step backward in the stack. We've chosen the horizontal detail line and stepped it um, step backward. And now it's behind the filled region. And we don't know if it's behind the uh, masking region. We just don't know, right? We don't know that because it exists right here. And the filled region is right there. So we don't know unless we move this. Right? So it did go one step backwards. It didn't go all the way to the back. Right? Because if we sent this all the way to the back, I'm sorry, if we sent this to back, then it would be masked by the masking region. Right here. Anyway, that's how it works. Just like Adobe Photoshop. Just like Adobe Photoshop. And I'm going to bring up Dow again. I want to bring up Dow. Their method, their workflow was uh, AutoCAD LT and created the submittal drawings and the construction documentation for the uh, contractors as well as the civil engineer. They worked in tandem with the civil engineer who was giving them some, uh, some, some, some DWG files as well to incorporate it into their workflow. But the disconnect was that they had, he had to take the DWG get into SketchUp. Now, you could possibly import a DWG into SketchUp and then use that 2D as your basis for creating your 3D model and then uh, bringing it from SketchUp into Adobe Photoshop to add the uh, photorealistic effects. Uh -uh. Not the way to do it. That's the disconnect in that workflow. Just gonna have to let them know that again. Because again, I was uh, made to look the fool. But uh, that's okay. <laughs> that's why I said, oh, thank God I asked as many questions as I did. I got enough info out of them. I got enough, I got enough info. I got all the information I needed from that workflow. All right, so that's that. Sending things backwards, sending them forwards. Rattle them this way, rattle them that way. Trip them up. All those things. All right, so repeating detail components. This is great. Uh, why don't we stop this? This video is going long. I'll talk your ear off. I'm a social butterfly. I am. In the right company... In the right company. I've been in companies where, what's the word I'm looking for? I wasn't welcome. They were eager in the beginning. When I got there, I wasn't welcome. 